This time I like to work it up from the bottom and try to get a nice what we may call a dollop and I gently just flow it in to the area. I'm now going to place it right back in the patient's mouth and like I said with this open here I could kind of see where I'm going how to line it up. One problem at times if the alginate bulked all over you have no view and how to guide this in. So I like to keep part of it away from the prepared tooth so I could kind of see past the lips on that how to guide this in. As I said this was getting in the doughy consistency. Now we're going to let this sit in the mouth so it gets a little more rubbery. Now here's a temporary and it looks quite good. Now it's at a rubbery stage yet. You can see I'm indenting it. And what I have to watch out for is locking this in. So in the mouth I may go with some plastic, a composite plastic instrument so I could get small enough to get interproximal so that even though the adjacent teeth are lubricated, if there's any undercut, it will lock on. And it is setting up beautifully. I will not try to remove it at this time yet because it's still a little too rubbery. Okay, several minutes have passed and the material is now quite rubbery. So as you can see the occlusion is going to be a little off probably because it's overflowed. And now this is getting nice and firm and able to pick it up. You can look at the detail. Is at this time then I would use the pressure pot and place it in there. After it sits in the while it's sitting in the pressure pot, I would then have the patient rinse out because it does generate some heat and the taste is not the best. And uh, have them take a little break. Their jaw has been open for a while. I want them to relax their muscles. And then I'll have them sit back and I'll have my assistant clean up a little bit. Uh, we don't want the lubricant on when we cement the temporary crown because it will hinder its attachment. So she will clean off with either hydrogen peroxide or even better, some diluted mouthwash. You can see how nicely it cuts. I don't want to lose the interproximal contact because I want to keep it stable so the teeth do not shift at all. You start trimming it. Clean it out. I soap it up. We come back to the mouth and fit it. Generally we get a very nice fit. And now the occlusion is going to be sitting high a little bit as you can see. So I know it's going to be sitting high so before I even try it I may trim a little bit of the occlusion down. Now what, if this tooth is like a core buildup or hasn't been built up with amalgam composite and it's kind of more of a lump, I may then just spend a little time to accentuate this temporary crown a little bit. I may try to put in a little better grooves, a little better anatomy. If your patient's paying a nice price for their crown, we'll give them something that they could appreciate even if it's just a temporary. Now, using Trim Plus, generally everything uh, blends in pretty good anatomically because you duplicated the tooth before you, it was prepared. However, sometimes the colors may be a little different. I've had patients with either some tetracycline or else some of their other teeth may have a little different hypoplasia due to uh, orthodontic work and they don't want me to generally cover that up with composite. So with the Trim Plus, it has multiple shades, and at that time I may go with the round burr, number six or eight round burr, and put a little ripples, little grooves, and then with the salt and pepper technique, 
Put a little powder in one, liquid in the other. And with a different color shade, lighter or brighter, I'll dip a little bit of the liquid, powder, and add it where I want. Liquid, powder, add it where I want. It starts to gel. It starts to lose its sheen. At that time, I would take some more of the mask that we used earlier to help seal it. Place it in the pressure pot. It'll be nice and hard. Take it out, retrim it, check the occlusion, and everything is fine. At that time, then, I will have it polished. Pumice is a great polishing uh, product. I sometimes will have my staff use just profi paste, a medium or coarse profi paste, and then eventually a fine profi paste on the crown. Tooth is cleaned off again. The inside is cleaned out of the temporary crown because it did have the lubricant in it. It's all cleaned up, and then I use a non-eugenol cement, and we re-cement it onto the tooth. The patient now leaves with hopefully a shade and a shape that will match what the patient had when they came in, probably look even better. Thank you. This presentation demonstrated Trim Plus PMMA Temporary Crown and Bridge Material. The same technique may be used with the Trim PEMA Temporary Crown and Bridge Material. For more information, contact the Bosworth Company or your favorite distributor.